Mary is blessed. Uh, the appointment by Pope Francis was announced by the papal nuncio to the United States, Most Reverend Christophe Pierre, on December 16, 2016. Uh, Bishop Kennedy was ordained to the priesthood on November 18, 1977, at the Corpus, Ch Corpus Christi Cathedral. Uh, he became Monsignor in 1990 um, under Pope St. John Paul II. And Bishop Kimmon served the Diocese of Corpus Christi most recently as Vicar General and Moderator of the Curia, while also serving St. Philip the Apostle Parish as pastor. Uh, Bishop Kimmon was born in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, on March 26, 1977, he was ordained to the Transitional Diaconate, and on November 18th of that same year was ordained to the priesthood. And the next paragraph kind of lays out all the areas that he, he really served, and I'm gonna let him cover that because most of it uh, was just greatly affected by Hurricane Harvey. And I know that that's a portion, I didn't give him a topic to talk on, I'm sure he's gonna have a number of things, but I do know he's gonna talk to you some, including Sacred Heart Parish in Rockport, Texas, where it was basically ground zero uh, for Hurricane Harvey. Uh, Bishop Kenneman is the son of Lewis Kenneman Jr. and Bernadine Kenneman. They were natives of Morgan City, Louisiana, and raised the bishop along with his brothers Kenneth, David, uh, Kenneth and David in the Gulf Coast from Clearwater, Florida to Corpus Christi, Texas, and parts in between. So uh, one thing of note that I just wanted to point out, because we were all sitting here talking about how we have children in Catholic school. And in 2007, he was the recipient of the NCEA Distinguished Pastor Award in recognition of his outstanding support for Catholic education. So we appreciate that. Bishop, the floor is yours. Thank you. Sacred <laughs> umbrella. Well, it's very good to be with you. I appreciate the, the invitation, and uh, I'm interested to see how the talk's going to turn out too. Myself, uh, uh, <coughs> had a story I'll tell you, it's a, meant to be a humorous story, so I hope it's humorous for you, um, and because part of the talk will be serious. Uh, the, there was a mother who uh, was fixing dinner, and as she fixed dinner, uh, she realized she didn't have tomato soup. So her son Tommy was about five years old, and Tommy was afraid of dark, and so they she asked him, well, Tommy, go into the pantry and get a can of tomato soup. He said, Mommy, it's really dark in there. I don't think I can do it. He said, don't worry, don't worry. So he gets about halfway there and stops. And he says, I don't think I can do it. He says, don't worry, Jesus is going to be with you. So he goes to the pantry door, and it's dark in there. And he's about to run back to Mommy in panic. Then he gets an idea, and his Mommy overhears him say, Jesus, if you're in there, would you pass me a can of tomato soup? <laughs> in many ways, I think that reflects part of life and part of what happens to us in business, too. Um, you know, we, we stand at that dark door sometimes and don't know whether to enter. And if we're people of faith, that becomes our prayer. Jesus, if you're in there, can you help me? Uh, and in many ways, uh, that's part of what happened to me when I got the phone call to be a bishop. Um, uh, as was announced, uh, Archbishop uh, Christophe Pierre, who is the uh, nuncio, we call in, in the church, but he's also the ambassador to the United States for the Holy Father. And so uh, when I got the phone call and I heard that French accent, I'm thinking, uh-oh, they know my name. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. And so, after a little bit of cordiality, he asked me if I would be the fourth bishop of, of Biloxi. And, you know, I said, you know, Archbishop, this, this really comes out of the blue. And I really didn't think this was going to be on the screen at all. And he said, yeah, uh, it's, it's a complete surprise, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it's a really big surprise. He says, I get that a lot on every phone call <laughs> out throughout the United States. Um, but it's really been a, a blessed time and a, a time of great welcome and great joy. And I am really touched by our folks here in the whole Biloxi Diocese. We go all the way up beyond Hattiesburg, all the way to Laurel, and then just draw a straight line across over to Alabama. 
So all of uh, Southern Mississippi is under me with the Catholic Church. Uh, and so we have 51 churches, 75,000 Catholics, to give you an idea of the, 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 the area. Uh, a couple of things just for uh, footnotes for you in terms of the church. Uh, you know, Sam, of course, represents for us the St. Vincent de Paul Pharmacy, and they do a lot of great work. They really do, and it's for the poorest of the poor, and most of what they do is free for the, the citizens of our area. It's really a great blessing. And along with that, you may not know or realize, but we have Catholic Charities and Catholic Social Services, which provides some wonderful, uh, you know, different services for the community. So we actually feed over 600,000 people a year, <laughs> that many people. And it's throughout the whole diocese, not just Biloxi, but it's all the way across the diocese. We have about 100 different locations that, that are in service with us. And some of those are non-Catholic churches. Some of those are 501c3s. But they're all doing really, really great work. Um, and uh, we have about 6,000 uh, women who are with child that we help with, with every year. Uh, it's really amazing. Uh, I've been deeply touched by the service and the number of folks. Um, you know, there's various other services that they that we've been per performed. So the uh, tornado that hit by Hattiesburg, we had 451 people that we helped and 17 homes that we've actually rebuilt uh, through those services of Catholic Social Services. Uh, so there's been some real blessings uh, that have taken place. And I think part of that is kind of uh, really echoing the, the, the basic call of the Rotary Club, and that's to be a call of service and to be really uh, people who are willing to be in service of the community, and that's the blessing of you. Uh, and that's really basic to the call of Jesus Christ. He, he called his disciples uh, to really be people who minister to others. We are servants of servants. That's really the, my title, too, is a servant of servants. And the Holy Father's title is, is the big servant mm -hmm. for all of us in a big way. And his whole, I think, direction of ministry has been to be in service of all the people of the entire world. Uh, and uh, I can't imagine what it'd be like to be in charge of 1.1 billion souls around the world and to have that conversation with the Lord over that. Wow, it's just amazing. Footnote for you, all the new bishops, by the way, have to go to school. And so I'm going to a school in about uh, a week in Rome, uh, and we lovingly call it Baby Bishop School. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's the spot where they actually have all the different departments of the church make presentations to us on the best practices of running a diocese and the best practices of serving the folks as the bishop. And then we're supposed to be able to have a, a personal visit with the Pope after, at the end of the session. So hoping to do that. And I will bring your uh, prayers and your salutations, if you will, uh, to the Holy Father from this area uh, for us. Um, you know, a couple of things uh, for you. As, as I was kind of thinking about the, the talk today, and given what's going on, um, to talk about Katrina a little bit, and then to talk about uh, Harvey, and to kind of bring them together. Uh, wherever I go, I can tell you that folks have Katrina on their mind in a big way. And so it's a time of prayer, I think, for all of us. Um, and, um, you know, there's a real, challenge with Katrina that happened, and, and you know better than I what that looked like, what that felt like, and what that was like as business people, but also people that live here. And um, and I, I, in many ways, I've heard so many stories, you know, I share with you that whole image. Um, and then the, the hard work it took to come back from Katrina. And you've been in the trenches, and you know what that looks like, and you know how hard that is. But also, there's some blessings that do start happening after a while. And so when we drive up and down, you know, 90, 
it's it's really a miracle that we are still here. <coughs> it's a miracle that businesses are still functioning. It's a miracle that the community is is up and going. And I, and I want to salute you on that because having seen so much and been all across the diocese in the last few months, it's been a, a blessing. Uh, it really has. Um, and that our armed services stayed with us, we are grateful to. And I got a chance to visit the base and sit in one of the C-130s and even in the pilot seat. I sent it back to my brother who flies a plane and I said, I'm in a C-130 pilot seat. And he, he texts me back, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. Uh, they were wonderful and I got a chance to bless all the pilots there that were uh, uh, there at the time. There were a few that were already out, you know, in that possible hurricane at that point that became a hurricane and now a tropical storm. Um, a couple of things, uh, you know, Corpus Christi is, is uh, not unknown to hurricanes. I was went through Celia there and uh, <coughs> it almost virtually destroyed the town in 1970. Uh, and so just news from having talked to various people, both governmental and also church there, uh, it was a, a blessing for them in the sense that the whole eye of the storm didn't hit them. They did have damage. They did have people they had to rescue. Uh, they are still in need. And one of the things that uh, has been suggested through Catholic uh, charities, both at Corpus Christi in Victoria and in Houston, is uh, uh, gasoline gift cards. So I'll suggest that to y'all. So for folks to be able to go to their families, wherever their families are, uh, that would be most helpful uh, for them. Uh, obviously, the Red Cross is, is really getting involved in a big way. Um, had an opportunity to, to talk with uh, the emergency manager in Corpus Christi, and it's uh, Billy Delgado. He is going to be the manager for the northern part of the Diocese of Corpus Christi, which includes Rockport. Uh, and the news from Rockport right now is dire. It looks very much like what Biloxi looked like after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, it's devastating. And so both <coughs> prayers and also whatever we can do to assist them. I have a couple of firemen crews that have contacted me and uh, we've encouraged to contact um, uh, Billy Delgado kind of coordinate uh, from here and also as far away as Iowa. I mean, it's, it, the connections are starting to really happen. Um, North Corpus Christi really got hit hard. So Aransas Pass, Port Aransas, Ingleside, and then Tybulity. It's not super deep populated, but those folks are really, really hit. And then as we go up into the Diocese of Victoria, so Quero and all those areas, water now has been the problem, water. And we go to Houston, of course, you've been watching Houston and that's unbelievable, it really is. Uh, I don't know how many people they've now asked to evacuate, but it's, it's a big number, it's amazing. Uh, so they're gonna need uh, a lot of assistance. Uh, we have a lot of volunteers that are already starting to line up from here because they wanna give back. And I heard that in your little talk, too. And that's really the spirit that I'm catching throughout the entire diocese is the willingness to, to give back and to share, you know, uh, the blessings we've had and also our experience. Uh, I have a couple of staff members that are FEMA and MEMA experts. So we're going to send them over to, to, to be able to work with the folks that are really suffering. Uh, and then... We're, we're praying, uh, you know, for everyone because it's not over. It looks like Louisiana's gonna get it. It's gonna go over my family's hometown, it looks like, Morgan City, twice. <laughs> looks like it's gonna circle it and then keep going, we pray. Uh, it gets, we'll pray for all of them and we may get a little bit of it too. Uh, I'm trying to get an agreement with the Lord that as long as I'm here as bishop, we will not have any major hurricanes. That's what we're praying for, uh, and to, to do that. Um, you know, the spirit of service, I think, that, that we experience here in the Biloxi area has been really quite profound. Um, and uh, thank you for your service and our armed services, especially. I saw you in your offices, but thank you again for all you do for us uh, and all you will do. 
And then for us as, as community members and leaders and also business owners, you know, the, the spirit of service that we have is really important and it's really needed. Uh, and the kind of service that we can bring, you know, to those areas hardest hit by Katrina, I think are really, really uh, valuable and, and very much uh, appreciated. <coughs> I have a, a poem I want to close with uh, that uh, I found very touching. Uh, it's it's uh, from a it's an unknown author, but it's an old poem. It's called "The Folded Page," and I think it captures part of what's going on now and what also happened to us through Katrina. Sit up in the attic in an old house as raindrops pattered down on the roof. I sat paging through my old school book. I came to a page that was folded down. Across it was written in my own childish hand. The teacher says we should leave this for now. It's too hard to understand. I unfolded the page and read it. Then I smiled and nodded my head and said, the teacher was right. Now I understand. There are many pages in the book of life that are hard to understand. All we can do is fold them down and write. The master says to leave this for now, it's too hard to understand. Then someday in heaven, we'll unfold the page, reread them and say, the master was right. Now I understand. Hmm. I'll be keeping you all in prayer and keep the folks in uh, Texas, Louisiana, and of course maybe here a little bit, but since I'm here, not a lot. Keep them in prayer. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Dave.